going on, guys? Letters addressed to Bo, the fifth column, Jesse Dallimore, and uh, to my favorite recovery person. Hey, Daryl. What's going on? Yeah, we are talking about a political hot potato that's cool to the touch on corporate media. Unless I've already missed a flack on this one the past few hours. I got sick and tired of the damn insane asylum going crazy. I mean, shh. Ever since the Colorado Supreme Court made their, their decision, everyone else in the conservative world is flipping their heads and corporate media is going nuts over this damn thing. And some of the people are trying to tell you that Trump is in danger because of this. I'm not even listening to the reactions just yet. Because I already know. <laughs> I can already guess. You see, Jesse to me on the radio, actually not to me specifically, but he was stating some things that he was hitting on the nail in this one here. And I had to start thinking about what the court had said, made their, their ruling in Colorado for their own ballots. Is it or is it not constitutional? And because of the 14th Amendment, I think it was Article 3, of stating that um, anybody who's committing traitorous, traitorous acts, I'm paraphrasing, is not eligible at all to vote or even be put on ballots. Meaning, if we have a guy who's spouting off things of destruction of everything that we hold dear, including the Constitution of the United States, the word of law, the spirit of law, and everything should be under, under one particular candidate. And that's his party right there, is the destruction of the government system. Including allowing and being an instigator of everything. Is it legal to allow this guy to be on the ballot advocating the destruction of everything that we know and hold and love and dear? Or is it the right and necessity to remove this guy from the ballot because he no longer has the freedom of speech allowed? We're talking about anarchy here. We're talking about promoting anarchy, but using the First Amendment to promote anarchy, looking at looking at the January 6th insurrection and showing him to be front and center to being the instigator of it all, and then seeing all the evidence and the backup and the testimony. We have it on record. Everyone else's skin jerk reaction to this thing. Knee jerk is usually the phraseology, but this one is like the skin is reacting to this irritating allergen that just went beneath the epidermis and into the damn nerve system, which is screwing around with the main body of our government, our government system, our way of life. That's how it's being reacted as. We don't want the thing into our bloodstream. We don't want the thing to be put into our, into the mindset of everybody. But it is there now. Was this freedom of speech allowed or not? It's one thing if you were going around the Capitol with a sign. I'm saying this hypothetically, but you know, going to every public government-sponsored place. I didn't say which particular government. I didn't say... If it was state or local, I said government. Saying that the government is corrupt, it needs to be brought down, and the Constitution needs to be put into the paper shredder. And I'm saying this as a hypothetical. Okay? This is not 
something I like to say lightly because right now it's not to be said lightly. But it is an example of such tyranny against a country who still depends upon the power of the people to keep it afloat and to keep it working. Not to mention all the principles that we have in order to keep it going. So I'm getting back to this fictional character advocating complete anarchy, destruction, and everything else. The thing is, under First Amendment rights, and there are going to be Supreme Court cases on this one, this would be a public citizen without any public office doing this, supporting complete anarchy. And if you happen to put up a, or addendum to, a, to the sign, telling the people that they should go out and commit the most heinous acts they can do. We know there are federal laws and there are state laws and government, uh, no, state and government laws that would only allow the, free, the freedom of speech to go to a point. Beyond that, we are talking about causing more than what the sign would say regarding freedom of speech. Promoting treason. I mean, we could be treasonous to the flag, we could burn the thing up because we've already got it on the U.S. Code systems. We already had court cases over this thing. This is not about flag burning. We're talking about the complete overthrow of the government itself, and that in itself to us is treasonous. And yet, 247 years ago, we did exactly that to England. And we wrote the Declaration of Independence, stating our intentions. And to get our government working, we had the Constitution. First, we had the Articles of Confederation, didn't work, but we changed it over to the Great Experiment, which was the Constitution, still adaptable to a lot of situations by allowing amendments to make changes whenever necessary in our country, including making up the 14th Amendment, making that more active, more prominent these days. So imagine if I was so full of rage at this point and huffing and puffing like crazy. I'm huffing and puffing like crazy. I'm a, I'm a walking, talking example. I am, right now, you would envision me in the capital, and I'm going to huff and puff my chest out, and I will put up this map or something about visualization or something like that. And keep this in mind, disclaimer alert, this is only hypothetical, but... In this hypothetical, I'm going to put my voice out. So I'm going to a government taxpayer place. And I'm going to post my little spiel out there. And all this, you can't stop me because I'm a First Amendment kind of guy. And I, besides that, I'm going to use this to... Do something and say something nasty. And worse. I'm going to, and if people happen to look at the damn stuff on the paperwork. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. A guy crazy one over here. He's threatening an overthrow the government and he's doing something about it right now. Send the Marines. Meanwhile, we'll get this on film. All right, Karen. Go do your spiel. I'll get him on camera. You know, we can do that on uh, situations that we see happening. About people getting thumped by our own local law enforcement. And that usually provokes a hell of a lot of situations. What we're talking about is some nut job going to the to a taxpayer funded government building 
and then making the most uh, heinous words and actions. That would definitely cause a hell of a lot more than having an eyebrow raised up. That would be having law enforcement coming down at that particular person and then having court cases going potentially for appeals after appeals to the Supreme Court if they're going to be allowing this particular heinous action. And there has to be precedents. There has to be court actions either to defend this schmuck or the government's action on this one. How would this affect the Trump and his Trumpsters at this point? If I'm using that name out there. I don't like using that name because I'm dealing with a schmuck out there and he's a, he's a schmuck. I know he's a schmuck. But I don't want to deal with the schmuck because he's a, smart, a schmuck. So besides the schmuck, and the schmuckettes and the schmuckers that follow them. Yeah. Promoting acts of heinousness, shall we say. January 6th was showing that a great deal. The most visual keeps getting repeated left and right, also probably in still pictures too. A terrifying thing that the weirdest part in our American history and European history. People gathered to watch executions and go nuts over it. If I'm going to be borrowing a country at this point who gave us help and we backstabbed their ass when they needed us the most at one time, they were going to get rid of their government system and followers of that by, let's just say that blades were used. And they had them publicly. It's in history books. What well, also been in the U.S. American, yeah, I know it's the same thing, but still, in American history books that we were taught, unless they've already been modified again, that we actually had public hangings happening, and we did theatrical films and shows about it. Hollywood was very busy in those days when they came out and wanted to show what the real West was all about. Try to recreate it. But they also showed how people was reacting towards others. And what got to me was people treated it like a Sunday picnic. Or maybe the hangings were on Sunday. You worship God and then you come out there and you take a picnic and you see the hangings. You call yourself religious folk. And you called yourself law law abiding, law and order. And then you laughed and jeered at the poor schmuck who was getting hanged. And you made a picnic out of a damn thing. Called it the wild, wild west thing. And Hollywood picked up on it so much that we had to have that, didn't we? Guys didn't figure about this one? Apparently not. So now we have this mentality going on again. Only what I'm, I'm seeing from for the last God knows how many decades this has been going on, longer than two or three, that we have public executions one way or another by the public and not by law enforcement. Unless, of course, law enforcement has got a burp their ass, which they have, which we still have a problem with in the first place. We've got the body camps catch them in action, but unfortunately we've got the bureaucracy of law enforcement to hold up the evidence. So if law enforcement was actually doing that kind of 
work out there. It's not being broadcasted. Now, is it? You know, just fish around YouTube. You'll be finding these kind of accusations going wrong by the independents. And they got to post it out there on YouTube. Unless they're already being taken off left and right by getting back to this particular portion we're talk we just started talking about. And I'm trying to lead up to this one. We take it for granted. We had taken it for granted in, in our fictionals, but now we got this going on. So where's the public reaction when we're trying to tell people that the sentiment's still out there to commit the most heinous acts and be accepted? Is this acceptable? Not in my book. You see it at the January 6th uh, hearing about all of the stuff happening, including the pictures and the videos and the chants about a certain vice president who's going to be open season, shall we say. Because he was doing his job. He was doing his job, but he wasn't allowed to do his job because he was supposed to be doing someone else's job, such as holding up the elections. And again, we have this on record. We have trials on this one. We have it on public records. But no. Not this one. Are you kidding me? Even as I speak, the United States Supreme Court is still trying to figure out if Trump can skate on this one for the Colorado situation. And there are legal implications on this particular puppy here. Does the state have a right to put a, to pull the guy off the ballot? The Supreme Court of Colorado had stated that Trump, with his mouth, had made himself a traitor promoted traitorous acts, and therefore it's not legal under the 14th Amendment to be on the ballot. Do we allow a traitor to, to uh, vote to be put on the ballot? But do we allow the traitors who follow the traitor allow such language to threaten lives? And right now, it's up in the air. The tweet was made and the tweet was pulled. And the only thing left right now is for the investigations to happen. Now, somehow, they're going to have that. They're going to find that evidence. Law enforcement will. And there's going to be an investigation because they always do. They'll keep it off the key. They'll keep it off the books. They're not going to put it in the public. Even though the public may have seen it for a short time and got it off. And everybody else is going to be having the conniption fits over this thing. Threatening the first family is the dumbest damn thing somebody could ever do. I'm not just talking about the name that we have currently running in the office at this point. I'm talking about, if we are talking about a first family in office serving at that time, and then the, the threat comes out during that time of administration saying that that family needs to be, well, being a representative of the 1800s, I guess. And we need to do it publicly. That's a surefire way of having a Department of Treasury and a Department of DOJ on your butt on this one. Yeah, I say in a roundabout things because there's things are so related with each other, people don't want to learn about it. They think, oh, it's just that. Yeah, well, sometimes just that has significant bearing. And if you don't want to listen to it, don't listen to it. Be ignorant as hell.
be ignorant of history, be ignorant of everything else. I didn't say that's a constitutional right, but that's what you're going to be showing to people anyway, that you're ignorant as hell. Anyway, my thunks right now for that. <laughs>